up everybody, Texas King Pig here again. This time I got my Bebop collection and I'm pretty excited about that. I've been waiting to bust it out for a while. Um, they came out with the new Ninja Turtles movies not too long ago. First one was okay, second one was even better. Had Rocksteady and Bebop in there, played by the wrestler Sheamus and Gary A. Anderson as Bebop. And so that was really cool. Here's why, like, this was the second Funko that I got, and um, I wasn't really collecting them at the time. The first one I got was Leatherface, and, um, you know, just as a cool Texas, you know, when I saw him, I couldn't resist. And then I saw Bebop, and he was too cool to resist. Rocksteady was there, all the Ninja Turtles. I wasn't collecting at the time, so I just got Bebop, and um, now I'm a big collector of the Funkos, and I don't have Rocksteady and all those other ones that were in that like original set and so that kind of stinks but at least I got Bebop who's my main man there and um, uh, a couple other you know this one's from the movie um, The Mask this other one uh, is just kind of like uh, not necessarily Bebop but obviously has features that are kind of like him and um, I got this this is what I was waiting to break out um, statue I got it off enightmedia.com. They sent me, like, um, I got a bunch of Funkos at the same time. They sent the order in two separate shipments, and the first one got lost. And so I got all my Funkos, and then I was, they are like, oh, well, your order's been delivered. I'm like, well, half of it has. Uh, where's the Bebop and the other stuff? And they're like, oh, that got lost in delivery, and we're out of stock of it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you're kidding me. Like, um, and I got on the website, and they still had it for sale. The other stuff that I uh, was missing did say out of stock, but it would let me order the Bebop again. So I emailed uh, whoever had contacted me, and I was like, it says that I could still order it. The price just kind of went up a little bit. You know, is that still possible? And they were like, oh, yeah, you're correct. We could send you the Bebop and just refund you for the rest of the stuff that you were missing. And so I was like, oh, cool, because I was definitely, I saw this at a comic book shop. It was pretty pricey. I went online. It was like 20 to 30% discounted on that site, Unite Media. And so I jumped on it and took advantage of that. And so I was like, oh, it figures that it would get lost in transit. And, uh, but Zod was on my side and it came through in the end and I did get it. And so I already opened it up for you because just now, actually, um, I had been waiting for today to open it, but I was going to open it on camera, but there was a little bit of assembly required and I didn't want to have to fiddle with that on camera. So I just went ahead and did it already. Stuff like um, the knife, the gun, his sunglasses, uh, his tail, all that stuff was not already on him. And he kind of had to move and, um, you know, like to get his chain belt on. It was like putting on a charm bracelet. And so I'm like, uh, I had to get my fiance to do it. It was too much. I couldn't, it was too small. I needed like tweezers and magnifying glass to get that going. So I was like, like, glad I'm not doing this on camera. It'd be taking forever. Just like, oh, forget it. He's not wearing a belt today. Um, so that is really cool um this set he's part of this is from good smile company he's part of a set of the villains four villains shredder rocksteady bebop and krang and together they make like this big awesome i don't know if it's pictured here yeah it is i don't know how well you can see that but we'll get a view at least after the show of that picture where all of the villains are kind of together and um, to make one big statue of them. And what I was reading was, if you, they each come with a code, and if you type in the code, or if you get all four of them and redeem your codes by December of 2018, they will send you um, a aluminum piece of artwork by, you know, uh, I think this guy, James John or James Jean, um, that sounds really cool. I don't know if I'm gonna 
you know, these, I mean, like, it's awesome, really highly detailed. I don't know if I'm a big enough fan to, like, splurge on all four of them like that. But, you know, I'm really happy I picked up this one. And so, moving on from that, uh, another awesome find is these. His visor. And it is a great find because I was looking them up and, you know, he has these, uh, these are the exact same ones that Gary A. Anderson, not the exact same, it's not his pair, I guess, but it's the same model that Gary A. Anderson wore in Ninja Turtles 2. And I found it on online, igax.com, sold these and a bunch of other ones, and they advertised them as such that, oh, it's the same ones that Gary A. Anderson uh, used. You know, we made them for the movie. And I'm like, what? Awesome find. So I ordered a pair. They took a little while to get here, but I found out that they were being made to order. And so, you know, you can't rush that. You can't be mad at that either. You know, it's not like there's a bunch of stock pairs of these just sitting around. And, um, uh, of course, everybody wants to know, like, when you, like, when they see them, can you even see out of these? things they don't have lenses it's just like a small slit in there but just like you know when you squint your eyes you don't all of a sudden like become halfway blind to the rest of the world you know you kind of hone in on what you're trying to look at that's what this is basically you know see exactly what you want to see and that's what they say on the site which uh i had a little bit of correspondence with paul summer the uh designer of these designer and creator um, of these glasses or visors I should say and um, he was uh, he sent me a little video that I don't know if I'll put it in during while I'm talking about it or at the end for you all to see but um, see what you want to see is what it says you see stuff in true color and it blocks out uh, the Sun just like um, sunglasses but you don't have lenses and stuff so you don't get the sunlight coming into your eyes but you also don't have it you know sh everything shaded dark and so um on there they were talking about djs using it uh professional gamers which i'm like oh cool i'm gonna be a professional gamer professional poker players i'm like oh cool i have a poker night i'm gonna start wearing these at poker everybody have to deal with that um i was excited to catch them uh gary a. anderson lost a whole bunch of weight and so I'm like, good, he's done being Bebop, come get me, Texas King Pig. I will be the next Bebop, don't worry, I already got the, the shades, so we're good. I'll show, me and Seamus, we'll have no problems working together, I'm sure. Um, so, awesome find, and you know, like, a little history on these, I was always wondering, like, why, you know, like, Bebop had these kind of shades. And it didn't really go for him, but like on the site they talk about how the old Inuit like hunters used to have these to prevent snow blindness and you know stop like the snow in their uh, you know if they're in a snowstorm you could still see they didn't have sunglasses but they made these out of like bone and wood and stuff like that and you know prevent them from you know seeing or I mean getting all blinded by the snow. And which brought me, made me think of another one of my favorite villains from DC Comics, Captain Cold, wears shades just like these. And that finally explains that to me. It doesn't really explain it to Bebop. Bebop just looks cool with them, I guess. But Captain Cold wears them. And um, it's like, oh, well, no wonder. He's always in like a kind of Eskimo outfit in the comics. And he had these shades. And I just thought they were cool. But they actually have like history with, you know, Captain Cold, the snow blindness. And so somebody get, um, I almost called him J.G. Wentworth, Wentworth Miller, Captain Cold on the CW for Legends of Tomorrow and The Flash. One of my favorite villains and I love his portrayal of him. He's running around um, with goggles instead and um, I think it would be awesome you get him a pair of these in blue, just like Captain Cold used to wear, uh, you know, and like you could even, 
uh, I, I'll, I all imagined it already. Like, oh, you know, like he gets, you know, in a firefight or something, and you know his gla- his goggles break, and then the next scene he's got a, a pair of these on, and I was like, what the hell are those? You know, he's like, oh, I had to whip out a pair of my, you know, my old frames because my goggles broke. You know how everybody is with their glasses. They, like, bring out their retro pair. And everybody who knows anything about Captain Cold would instantly recognize these as, like, his classic visor that he wears all the time. All the time, excuse me. Um, But, yeah, totally awesome. Getting ahead of myself. I can't even talk anymore. I'm choking up. Uh, Need to take a second to catch my breath. But, yeah, tons of awesome stuff. Find these on iGags.com. Go look them up yourself. Um, I believe they're sold out, but there's a bunch of different models, and I don't know when they'll be back in stock again or anything like that. But there's other models that have, like, little triangles and diamonds cut out of them, all these different designs. You don't have to have it squared off. There's a rounded uh, visor and just tons of pictures on there that look really cool. Look like they're straight out of like Blade Runner or something, you know, in sense of fashion. But I was more than happy to find this site and to find these. And I thought it was really cool that it's the same ones that Bebop wears in the movie. And so I had to pick them up and I couldn't wait for them to come in. And finally I got them. And so um, I guess on the uh, end of this episode, I'll just tag on to where um, because... Obviously, this has some influence on uh, where I came up with the Texas King Peg name and character. When um, the history of that is, I used to watch Dukes of Hazard a lot when I was younger, and I like I liked um, Boss Hog was my favorite villain. Um, I didn't really care. I mean, the Duke boys are cool, but I watched the show for Boss Hog and. Um, I didn't care about General Lee as much as I cared about his big white Cadillac convertible with the horns on the front, and um, he's always in the big white suit, uh, all white, and I just thought he was a hilarious villain and stuff. Wasn't that bad, you know? Uh, well, I guess as bad as like trying to frame those like young guys for anything to get him in jail, um, but. Not, nothing as bad as, like, trying to murder people or something like you see other villains and stuff. In, in some episodes, he would even team up with the Duke boys and Uncle Jesse when, like, serious trouble rolled through town. And so, um, Boss Hog, I used to use the Boss Hog name all the time as my username. And when I was getting onto Xbox Live for the first time, I knew that Boss Hog, you know, Slim Thug was already using it, the rapper... And I knew just that it wasn't original. It was going to be a name that was taken. And I didn't want to do, like, Boss Hog 123 or 88 or, you know, all the little X, Boss Hog X. Um, I really hated that. And so I was really into mafia lore and stuff also at a young age. And so I was kind of like, oh, uh, I'll do King Pig, like a play on Kingpin. You know, and that way I'll have the mafia kind of lore to it. And um, I still have my boss, hog, you know, king, pig, authority, and swine combo that I was going with already for my, you know, little character. And when I thought of him, I would think of, like, you know, guys like Bebop or, you know, um, really, I guess, mostly him. Like, there's... uh, other ones like Pigsy from Manhunt or uh, Professor Pig from Batman. All those guys kind of uh, had like a little bit of influence of like using the pig as their um, their main core character concept. And I always thought of my like Texas King Pig is half mafia, half you know like post apocalyptic. You know, if I had drawn him out, like you know, kind of like Bebop, Escape from New York or something, the Duke of New York kind of thing I loved uh he's another one of my favorite villains you know uh also another driving a big Cadillac and he had the chandeliers like on the ends of it it was ridiculous and I love that um and so I drive a big Lincoln a big old Lincoln that's you know I have to like work on keeping it together it's not uh it ain't Boss Hog's car that's for sure 
Um, but uh, I love the heck out of it, and I I always dream of it being you know like the Duke of New York's car or Boss Hog's Cadillac someday. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's how I came up with the King Pig name. I just threw Texas on the front of it just be, in case any there was any other King Pig out there. Though there wasn't, you know, I, I would Google it every all the time just to see if there was any kind of other King Pig. It wasn't until Angry Birds came around that, like, the little pigs, the enemies or whatever, they have a king. And so eventually when I typed in King, uh, king Pig, it would come up with that, like, little Angry Birds pig. And so I was like, ah, finally here's another King Pig when you search for that. But I'm the original one, and I was... That's the only, one of the few original things that I've come up with, and so I stuck with it, and I've had it for about 10, 12 years or so. And so everybody's always asked me um, how I came up with that, why I chose that. A lot of times people read it as Texas Kingpin, and that's why I made it three words, because I was afraid if I put it King Pig together, everybody would just read it Kingpin without bothering to look. And people, even as separate words, they still read it as kingpin sometimes. So it's whatever. Um, but yeah, so that's the mystery of why I've chosen the name Texas King Pig, and that's how I came up with that. So this is my Bebop collection. I'm Texas King Pig. This is my show. Now you're in the know. I gotta go.